everyone, this is G from bringing you my third video game review. This time I'm gonna talk about Alien Trilogy for the Sony PlayStation. So, let's get started. Rather than following any of the plots from the original trilogy, the game has its own storyline taking place in the settings of the trilogy. A company has infected a group of colonists with the aliens in order to smuggle them through quarantine and get them to their bioweapons lab. Of course, this gets totally out of control. You play as Ellen Ripley, the main character from the Alien movies, who has to clean up the mess and kill the alien scumbags once and for all. Alien Trilogy is a first person shooter where you have to kill a whole bunch of aliens, employees of the company who either are infected or just wants to get rid of you, and so on. The object of each stage is told through text based mission briefings. The game has about 30 stages, which are separated into three parts, which makes sense since they are based on the first three movies, so that every movie setting has about 10 missions. You start in the colony complex on LV-426 from Aliens, then you're on a prison planet from Alien 3, and the last stage is on the derelict spaceship from Alien. At the end of each movie section you face the Alien Queen, which means you have to kill her three times. After every section you get a CGI cutscene. In every mission several things have to be accomplished in order to succeed. These include shooting a lot of xenomorphs, finding items such as ID cards from your infected colonists, and activating switches to power up certain areas. You can finish the areas without doing the missions, but then you just end up in having to start the mission all over again. Items are all over the place, including health packs, ammo, night goggles, an auto mapper, and batteries which you need in order to activate some of the switches. First you start with a regular pistol, but you find a shotgun early on. Later you get stronger weapons which also can shoot grenades and seismic charges. Down on the right side of the screen you can see a motion tracker that tells you where the aliens are. But only if they move. In order to move use the D-pad, the analog sticks are not supported since the DualShock controller wasn't released back then yet. With the X button you shoot with your regular weapon, with the square button you fire grenades and seismic charges. The triangle button changes your weapon and with circle you activate switches or doors. The L1 and R1 button moves you sideways and with R2 you run faster. You'll never screw up because of the controls in this game so I have no issues with it since you'll get used to it in a matter of minutes. The game does a really good job in creating a creepy atmosphere. The overall dark tone that every stage has and the movie-like settings gives you this claustrophobic feeling that not many first-person shooters had at the time in my opinion. The design is great and it represents the trilogy very well. With the great use of fog, fire and much more stuff, every stage has its own unique kind of feeling. While the levels are well done, the enemies just look like a pixelated mess, at least the bigger ones. I accept that since this is an early PlayStation game. But sometimes it's hard to tell if there's an alien or if it's just part of the scenery since they are not really in 3D but this wannabe 3D style. On the other hand, there's a good variety of enemies to fight such as face huggers, chest busters, dog aliens, cyborgs and many more. However, the levels look good as I said but they are confusing as hell which makes it hard to navigate in some parts since it's a large maze. Shames on you if you haven't played this game because then you have missed some of the greatest tunes in video game history. Yes, I'm serious. Sometimes I just pick up this game because I want to enjoy the music. Well, now in the days of the internet, things have changed, but the music is so awesome that you can hear it in your CD player with the PlayStation disc. And no joke, the songs vary from adrenaline pumping, upbeat, ass kicking killer tracks. to quiet pieces of music which also fit the mood of the game perfectly. Sometimes the music can make an awesome game even more awesome. In this case, the music makes the game. From the moment when you start the game, you are greeted with awesomeness, since the title music is the best song on them all. Oh man, that gives me goosebumps. The sound effects is good as well. I get annoyed by the sound of the pulse rifle and the smart gun after a while, but that's just me. And if you listen close enough, you can even tell which alien is behind that door. Alien Trilogy was developed by Probe Entertainment, which were responsible for the first Mortal Kombat games on the Sega Mega Drive, and published by Acclaim and Fox Interactive in 1996 for the Sony PlayStation and the Sega Saturn. Oh, Fox Interactive, that's a bad sign right there. But no, actually this game was received very well. In fact, it's one of the few appreciated license based games out there. It has a 78% score on IGN and some critics have even praised the game for its high production values. The 
concept of Alien being a first person shooter showed to be pretty good, so later they made a first person shooter out of the fourth movie too. You suck at this game. You can't get past the fourth stage? Try using the following password. I got pink acid boots on. When you've done that, you have the opportunity to be invincible, hit all weapons, hit infinite ammo and select any stage you like. But beware, even with all cheats activated, this game will drive you nuts. And this is more of an advice, but I beg you to explore every little corner in this game, since you don't want to restart the level just because you forgot an ID tag somewhere. What keeps this game from being really good? Well, certainly there are two things to be mentioned here as the main reasons. First, the level layout is too confusing. You'll be running around for a long time a lot, trying to figure out where to go or what to do next, because let's be honest, many parts look nearly identical. The game simply lacks of narrative direction. The auto mapper does a bad job of telling you where you are, since you can't tell much out of it, because it zooms way too close. The second thing, and definitely the biggest flaw of the game, is that it's just too damn hard. Seriously. I have this game since about 1998, 1999 or something like that and I never got far at all without cheating. Even when I recorded this I ended up dying very early on in the game. And dying is a real pain because you have to start the level all over again. And that sucks considering you sometimes spend over 30 minutes at certain parts and then you die. You really want to shut the system off because of that because you don't want to do the same thing again and again. You wanna know why the game is so hard? The enemies take too damn long to kill. If you are stuck with your regular pistol, you won't get far, because you run out of ammo before you have even killed one Xenomorph. I tried to defeat the Queen just for fun with the pistol, and boy, I wasn't finished after 10 minutes. For me, it's just impossible to beat this game without cheating. I'm sorry, I suck. But wow, why start all over again when you die? You die a lot, why can't there be any sort of checkpoint somewhere? I'm not the type of guy that smashes his NES controller when he gets mad at the game, but damn, after dying so many times in the same stage, I just want to throw my PlayStation controller at the first person that comes into my room. It's frustrating and it drives me insane. And if the game wasn't hard enough, you don't even get full energy when you go to the next stage. You keep the energy you had left in the last one. Man, Ripley is a hard woman, I can tell you that. And well, I already told you the enemies look shitty, but that's just a minor thing compared to the difficulty. And do you want to see the best ending ever? Here it is. Nothing. Not even the credits. Well, yes I know, there is an ending. But that one doesn't come up if you cheat. And I can't imagine that it's worth all the hours of pain you have to go through beating this game without cheats. Now it's time to finish it. Once and for all. Just because the game is hard doesn't mean it sucks, a wise man once said. And I agree. Why would I ever play through this game with all cheats activated if it wasn't appealing to me? The atmosphere catched me and it got me playing this game more often than many of my other PS1 games. And believe me, I have a lot of PS1 games. The level design and the music make this game memorable. And somehow I don't want to stop playing, at least for a while. Don't we all love this situation where it's dark, everything's quiet. And suddenly an alien comes out of nowhere, scaring the shit out of you. Nice. The variety of aliens is very impressive, since every one of them is there, from the eggs to the dog aliens. The alien queen is huge, and as I kept that freaking out. This game stays true to the movies, and the attention to detail has charm. I also like these people here, which either say, or shoot me. It's nice that there is a cutscene when you die, and something I find quite interesting is that you have the option to save, as well as using a password system for those people who didn't have a memory card yet. Go with the time, people. Go with the time. This game is a mixed bag. While the atmosphere is pure awesomeness and will get you into the game from the very start, the unfair difficulty will turn off many people after a few deaths. If you like old school first person shooters, this game is definitely worth a try. If you like the movies, go ahead. I'm a big fan of the first and third movie myself, and I can tell you, it makes you want to go and watch the movies again. But otherwise, if you're not into first person shooters or the Alien franchise, you should skip it because you probably won't enjoy this game, with the exception of the music which everyone should like. Personally, I don't like FPSs in general, but this game still made me its bitch because this is my favorite first person shooter of all time. Overall, 
This is a very good game, if you keep in mind it's based on a movie. Well, that's it folks. Thanks for watching, I hope you liked my review and that it brought Alien Trilogy to your attention. My next review will be Ratchet & Clank for the PS2. I'll see you later. Have a nice day.